when you update the operating system of the Raspberry Pi or any Linux system, uh, you go through a series for, of commands. For example, on the Raspberry Pi, it's apt-get update, apt-get upgrade, and apt-get distribution upgrade. You normally have to be online to do the update itself. Uh, but what you can do is you can actually create a repository yourself locally so that you can actually um, do these uh, updates offline. So there's certain advantages you get. Um, the first one, it reduces broadband uses. So if you're on broadband and you've got a limited amount of broadband you can use each month and you've got lots of Raspberry Pis you want to update, then you can actually reduce the, the amount of your broadband uses by creating a local repository from the first update and then um, doing your updates on your other Raspberry Pis from your local repository. It also provides faster updates. Uh, so, for example, uh, your local network might be a 1 gigabit network, whereas your broadband speed might be 100 megabits. So for the download period of the update, it'll, be a, it'll operate a lot quicker. And if you've got, again, if you've got a lot of Raspberry Pis, that will reduce the speed, uh, the, the amount of time you need to do your updates. You can do offline updates as well. So you need to be online for the first update of your main uh, Raspberry Pi. And that update has to have all the packages in that you need for all of your other Raspberry Pis. Uh, but it only needs, the, all the packages only need to be on your master uh, repository uh, machine. Uh, so you can make your repository from that machine. Uh, but then once you've created that repository, you can then do all of your other uh, Raspberry Pi updates off of line. And you can also, um, so if you wanted to build new Raspberry Pis, you wouldn't need to go online to do that. You could make your first uh, Raspberry Pi from an image, and then you can use your uh, local repository to update the late, latest version of the repository. Uh, you can also, uh, so it allows you to make multiple repositories. Um, so for example, I actually have a repository for my Ubuntu updates, and also have a local repository for my Raspberry Pi updates. Let's just create cross customer repositories. So if you need certain packages to be at certain versions, but that's not the actual current release version which you'd get from an APT update from, from the online system. Actually, once you've created your local repository, you can mess around with the versions of packages within that repository to get them to the actual, the, each package to be the version you require. And one, once you've uh, got a known repository and you've been using it, and so therefore it's a tested and known, and, and you know your Raspberry Pis work with it, you can actually uh, freeze that repository as a tested repository, and you can make an archive of that repository, basically. So the last thing being archived repositories. Uh, you can make as many copies of local repositories as you want, and you can actually pick and choose which one repository you use at any time, maybe for a certain project or or for a certain, a certain known goodness of of, of being usable and then of course you've got the latest version as well so you can download the latest version of stuff if you need the latest version of stuff. So I've got three Raspberry Pis here. Um, this one, first one, is uh, CCTV4. I'm going to use this as the master repository, so the one which I'm going to update from the live service, uh, from the live APT repository. Uh, this second one uh, is called Test3, RPI Test3. I'm going to use this to create my local repository um, these can both be the same uh, repo uh, the same machine, um, so your master repository can be on the same one as where you create your local one, but I'm separating it out just to make it clear as to uh, the separation between each stage. And then this third one, I've got uh, RPI test 2 b uh, which is the one which is off I'm going to update as in an offline kind of state for my local repository. So the first part of the process is to be on the where you want to create your master repository, well, where you want to update the machine so it's got all the packages on it. Uh, so you just have to do the apt-get update to get the latest updates. You then do an apt-get upgrade, which downloads the latest packages. This one's already up to date, um, but these are the commands you'd, you'd run to get the latest ones. Uh, and then an apt-get um, dist upgrade so get all the distribution upgrades. Again, it's, it's up to date. So that's what you have to do on creating or, or making your master uh, local packages. So then moving to the, the Raspberry Pi where I actually want to create my, lo my local repository. There's a few things that need to be done. So first of all, get the package, dpackage dev and install it. Uh, that should already be in as part of the Raspberry Pi install, but um, just to make it make sure it's there um, install that 
And then um, I'm gonna install Apache, which is a web server, because I'm gonna run my repository locally off of a web server. So you, you can run it as a, just a file share if you just got a, like a local network file share. Uh, but if I'll go through in this example as to how to run it as a, a web server, because it's really easy to set up. So I install uh, Apache. So now what I want to do is I want to create the directory in the web server where I'm going to uh, create my local repository. Uh, so this is the the default web server location for placing files. Uh, and then I'll create a directory for the rep, uh, local repository. Uh, and then these other directories are uh, names that you need to use. Um, and this last part refers to the architecture. So the ARM, so that one's for the ARM architecture. Uh, and on on things like Ubuntu, the architectures will be called something different. And then you need one for all architectures, um, which is common to any updates you do. Uh, and then you need to get the copy of the packages from the uh, place where you downloaded them to when you did the update of your master system. So that's on my local machine here at 204. Uh, and it, they come from they get placed in this var cache apt archives directory and you just um, put a star on to get them all across and then you want to place them straight into the web server under the repository directory so if you use scp to copy the files across um, do it as a Pi user because the root user by default doesn't have permission to SCP. Uh, but now I need to go to the directory where the base directory where my repository is going to be or, or where we're creating it at the minute. Uh, and then I have to run a couple of commands, um, which are one for each architecture. Uh, so it, it's this scan packages. And it creates this uh, packages.gz file, which creates information about the packages which we have and it goes through the packages and it, it um, selects what the latest version of each package is which we can use, uh, which we should be using so don't worry about the uh, the warnings so uh, that's just showing you that sorry uh, that, that there was um, duplicate packages but of different versions and it's just saying that it's using the latest one and it's not going to use the previous ones so now I'm doing the same thing uh, but for the uh, for the all architecture. Okay, so that's created those uh, package definitions. So I'm going to create a uh, directory in the distributions directory uh, called pixel. And then I'm going to want to change into that directory. I'm going to create uh, a few files here. Uh, the first one's called um, release and it just goes in that directory and I'm going to put the content in and it's just some information uh, it doesn't really matter what um, the words you put in here are so you can change these values to all your own so the version I've changed to 00 because I'm just using a local repository you can set your own date and architectures and description and save that and then um, can I create another one, uh, another file, a release file? Uh, but this time it goes under the under the architecture directory, and it, again it's going to contain just just some information about that particular directory. And uh, it's very similar information, and just change this to however you feel you want the information to be. And then I need to do the same again, um, but for the all uh, architecture. So I'll just put that information in there, and the information is basically the same as in the in the last one. So now I'm going to create the website. So I accidentally uh, switched to this uh, browser view a couple of times during the video. Sorry about that. Um, so if I go to this um, page now so I've got Apache installed and so that's the default 
page you see when the patch is installed. So I want to change the uh, default configuration for Apache. So uh, this is where the default configuration goes. So I'm just going to update it to what I what I need. So I'm going to delete all the lines which are currently in there. And then I'm going to insert my own lines. And the reason I, I'm not using the default uh, configuration uh, is that I want to be able to browse the directories uh, in the web browser. So you need to change some of um, some of the the options uh, which I'm and I'm simplifying taking out all the comments just to show you the lines which go in here so uh, and it just shows you where the document route is and so it's basically does the same thing but uh, these are these options have changed so you can browse the directories uh, and if I do an Apache restart I'm gonna want to so that, that will re read the configuration that I've just put in there uh, and then I'm going to want to rename the index file uh, because I don't want the, the page that we just saw, the default page, to come up. So I'm just going to rename that to, to something else. So I'll do that by using the move command. And I'll, I'll just uh, rename it to um, demo HTML. So now if I go to the web browser, so now you can see um, a directory of the web service. So I, I can now, get on my network, on my local network, I can get to this um, web server from any of my Raspberry Pis, which means I'll, I'll be able to use the, re, re, um, re, the local repository for any updates from any of my Raspberry Pis. Uh, so there's the demo HTML, that's still there, I've just renamed it. And then the local repository, I can go through that and browse so there's packages and things. So that's the repository created and it's actually ready for use. Uh, so if I go to the third Raspberry Pi and I, so in order to use it, you need to update a, a configuration file for, for the APT updates. It's called sources.list. And I'll uncomment, I'll sorry, comment out the, the one which is used currently for doing online stuff, uh, updates. And I'll just put in a reference to, oops, to the one that I'm going to use, which is, uh, let's see, what, what was the IP address? 213. So I'll change that to 113. So that's, so that's the one we just created. And, uh, and it will use that now by default because I've commented out the one which is online. It won't go online to do any updates. Uh, so once you've uh, done that, you need to do an get update, which will update the repository to use the local one. Um, there's the IP address of uh, the repository showing it's actually uh, doing the update from the local repository. And then do an APT get up upgrade. And these are the packages it's going to use from the local repository. It's not signed, so it'll say these packages are being used without verification. You have to just put a lowercase y and hit return. and do an apt-get distribution upgrade. And then it's ready to reboot. So that's it. So um, we created a an offline apt repository locally. And then with the offline uh, repository offline, I did an update of the Raspberry Pi and um, um, that's that's the complete uh, set. So you can do this from a, a network file storage device, or from a USB stick, or from a, a web website like we've done in this one.